Welcome back to another edition of the 5-Minute-ish Reviews. And first up here, I got this as part of the uh, kind of the Kaiser annual sale. Um, and I uh, got this for a very, very cheap price. Uh, I think it was about 32 bucks overall. This is a Kaiser Horn. Uh, I actually have recorded a review for this thing. I honestly don't remember at this point if it's out already or not. But... I love this damn thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about it. We have some interesting micarta going on here. Very, very high thread count on the micarta here. So really appreciate to see that. This is an Azo My design. We got their standard deep carry pocket clip. We got a little lanyard hole in the back there. Um, we can see that it's got full steel nested liners. We can swap that pocket clip, which is great. And we got uh, some interesting... Um, deployment options. I can either do that uh, index finger kind of flick or a reverse flick or a uh, full thumb sort of thing. You can flick it. It's not my favorite thing to do with it. And of course we can also use the, uh, the front flipper on here or not the front flipper, just the, the flipper tab. Speaking of that flipper tab, you can actually uh, remove in case you don't like that. That will, of course, allow you to uh, choke up a bit on the blade, as that will uh, kind of turn that into a uh, large enough finger trial for you. We've got some nice uh, uh, lock bar access going on here. And a whole bunch of jimping up here that really ends up working out well for me. Uh, I really appreciate uh, all of that sort of stuff. That, and this is also an Azo my design that doesn't have proud steel liners. Um, so definitely a plus in my book as those end up being much more uncomfortable to me than the, uh, the faux contouring, um, that it kind of provides, uh, would give you, uh, kind of one of the downsides this one might have, it's an older model. So it's using, N690 blade steel, which isn't exactly known as like a crazy huge premium kind of knife blade steel. It's, uh, you know, right in that, um, kind of in that middle range between 14 or, uh, 440C and 154CM kind of blade steel. Um, I used to poo poo it a bit as, uh, thinking it, um, uh, pertained a little bit more to like AUS eight, but no, uh, it, it's a bit better than that. And it's also a, uh, uh, Buller Uderholm steel. So don't really mind it all that much. Uh, and this blade is strange looking. However, does have a lot of, uh, advantages to it. For one, I can pinch grip this blade. It's tall enough that, uh, I don't have any struggles whatsoever. And that gives me a lot of, um, area up here on the modified sheep's foot slash almost reverse tanto kind of blade here to be able to uh, do any of those utility cuts that I would want to do. Um, and uh, having it nice and thin out here is nice for doing some uh, slicing things where you don't really want uh, extra blade kind of um, binding or getting up on you. Uh, and also this uh, curve here, at least for me with my uh, kind of largish hands, really, really easy to get down to that tip for uh, doing a lot of work for it. Yeah, this thing is... Um, Quite surprising for uh, how little money it actually is, slash was. Um, like I said, uh, this one was kind of an older model. I think they, they might have been on clearance or something like that, which is why I ended up being able to pick it up for like 32 bucks. But um, absolutely glad I did. This is a fantastically designed knife. You might not like the uh, the brown or natural micarta on this one. It's not exactly the most aesthetically pleasing thing that I've ever seen, but uh, also doesn't really bother me all that much. And yeah, it's got a nice amount of grip to it. That's a really, really good knife. Alrighty, let's um, go ahead and uh, take a look at some uh, stats on this thing, and we can move on to the next one here. We have 2.6 millimeter blade stock thickness, so a little bit thinner than usual. We have uh, 3.25 ounces or 92 grams going on here. And that is for a 3.19 inch blade from that little corner there out to the tip. Misses the, uh, the ounce and inch mark, but by 
such a small degree that it really shouldn't matter for you. But that uh, blade length should be 81 millimeters. Um, and the uh, handle thickness, 0.51 of an inch. So right basically at that Spyderco PM2 thickness. But of course, this is uh, contoured, whereas that is a flat slab. So that's only at the thickest points. And it, of course, is uh, less around the edges on that. That's going to be 12.9 millimeters for it. Fantastic knife if you can get a hold of it for a, uh, a nice and cheap price. All right, next up, we have, yeah, this guy here. This is a six leaf SL25. Uh, this is going to be a rattlesnake design as almost all, um, but not every single one now of uh, the six leaf knives are. This is uh, quite a large knife. As we can see here, um, yeah, we have a decent uh, lock bar access to it. We have a large hole for uh, doing some reverse flicking on it. We have a uh, front flipper, which ends up working out all right. And uh, we also have a back flipper, which means it works as long as you get this finger out of the way real quick otherwise yeah the blade's not gonna uh, open and it could be painful in this particular case it doesn't pinch me like uh, some other knives do but uh yeah it, it ends up working out all right this is uh near as makes no difference a uh a full flat grind on the blade here d2 blade steel this is one of their budget models here and uh my carta this is uh doesn't have a huge amount of grip going on to it um it's not crazy polished, but it is a uh, higher polish than uh, a lot of others there. Uh, that might help uh, out a bit if your hands are uh, starting to get wet. It might add a little bit of grip to it, but um, it's it really doesn't have quite as much grip as, say, this Kaiser does. It's also in a uh, very, very different micarta here. This is uh, kind of the, uh, the China standard uh, uh, flax sort of handle that's... Uh, uh, another way that they refer to uh, micarta as, and they don't really have exactly the uh, the crazy highest quality uh, available if they want to uh, do them locally, which is um, definitely something that Kaiser has a hand up in because they've uh, they've invested over the years in lots of different micartas from different countries and stuff like that. This guy does have a bit of that snaggle tooth where you can see I can end up touching the blade a bit. Um, and a bit of that is probably because this thing has a full four millimeter blade stock thickness on it, which puts a large gap on the backside there. If this was like a three millimeter blade stock, they might've been able to get, uh, get a little bit more out of that without me really complaining, but, uh, yep. Yeah, and it is kind of what it is. This isn't the most egregious, but, uh, it's still something you need to keep in mind there. It says a G10 backspacer. It doesn't have a matching micarta backspacer. Keep that in mind. As, uh, you know, that's just something that uh, I tend to like when a, uh, a company will um, kind of keep the, uh, the same material for the backspacer when they are using micarta. But, of course, that is a little bit more expensive than just doing it with the G10 because the G10 is much easier to uh, end up machining and putting them out quicker. So, yeah, there you go. Blade on here, uh, very, very gradual drop point. It's not quite a uh, straight back, but there you go. Um, the uh, the blade geometry on this guy feels quite a bit like the uh, Tucson TS223 Monarch, where it's still that four millimeter blade stock thickness, but it does come down to a nice, nice thin point. Of course, if you do um, take care of that uh, snaggle tooth and grind back, the edge on uh, this portion of the blade, you're gonna lose a little bit of that thinness. It's gonna get a little thicker up there as it does when you sharpen a knife over time. The uh, the action on this thing, uh, not bad. It's it's definitely a wiggle shut and you can kind of feel a bit of the, uh, a bit of grain going on there. And that uh, definitely has to do with uh, the overall sandblast finish on the blade there that, uh, they do because it's um, it's definitely a, a cheaper way to uh, finish a blade than a satin or a stone wash finish. It just happens a lot quicker. This uh, seems 
kind of interesting if you're uh, really into just a uh, a large beater knife. Uh, this thing will probably do pretty darn well for you. Let's go with some uh, stats here. I said the four millimeter blade stock thickness on this guy. This is 5.42 ounces or 153.5 grams. Pretty darn heavy for, uh, you know, just kind of a, uh, a linered micarta knife. Uh, we do have skeletonization going on, mostly on the show side scale, but, uh, yeah, we got 3.44 inches worth of blade from, uh, that little apex there out to the tip. It's going to be 87.4 millimeters and it's real thick. 0 0.65 of an inch or 16.5 millimeters thick here. Um, so this is definitely not a, uh, a summer carry when you're wearing some, uh, light summer clothes. This is definitely much more of a, uh, a heavy work and beater knife. Wouldn't have minded if you could, uh, swap the pocket clip to the other side, but a lot of, uh, more budget knives don't offer that because that would require the extra machining time to, uh, tap the, uh, the other liner there. And, uh, I guess in this case, actually create that groove in the, uh, the micarta. Well, there you go. Next one, we have a mousinary. Uh, this is also, if I remember right, yep, also a rattlesnake design. But uh, him working with a different company there. Uh, this is the MK12. Uh, and uh, it's a bit different. It, uh, I suppose, is uh, near as makes no difference. A, a straight back knife. We have a little bit of a curve there. And then a swedge up top. But it is basically just perpendicular with uh, the uh, the back side of the, uh, the handle scales there. This guy has a thumb stud. But also a flipper tab. And actually... Ends up being able to uh, deploy decently with uh, both uh, both of them. It's a little bit more difficult for a uh, reverse uh, flick for that thumb stud there. Um, just because of uh, the thumb studs don't really stick out proud of the handle scales. It's alright if you want to uh, deploy it with your uh, left hand. But doing that uh, kind of reverse flick. A little bit weird and different there. This one has a bit of contour going on to the micarta rather than just uh, flat scales. Still G10 backspacer there. They didn't uh, really uh, continue on with the micarta on it. And we have a folded steel pocket clip. This one is uh, nowhere near deep carry, but uh, it is kind of the way that it is. It's uh, fairly interesting. Um, it is a, a full four finger grip knife. Pocket clip in this one in particular really kind of bothers me. Uh, it's not exactly my favorite thing there. The plunge grind on it is uh, okay. It's a little gradual. We can see that I have hit that a bit uh, on both sides to make that smile. But of course, that sandblast finish will also show that more than a um, more than a satin finish, and definitely more than a stone wash finish would. We have some lock bar access, so it's not all that difficult to uh, get closed. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. The Mocenary knives, uh, they're high-end ones. Um, most of them I really, really like. They're, they're more budget models. I'm a little more iffy on in general. This one, just like uh, another one that I'd had uh, in the past, is uh, a little strange to get back together due to some kind of tolerance sort of things. Once it is back together, uh, everything's fine, but uh, you might find that uh, when you're putting it back together or something like that, one of these two Chicago screws um, really doesn't quite fit correctly, and you have to uh, do a little bit of jimmying rather than it just fitting right through. But uh, still, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting uh, budget knife. Uh, most of these guys are end up sold on uh, AliExpress. Uh, I do have one or two others coming from them. I think one of them's an integral uh, titanium frame lock. That one should be interesting. But, uh, all right, let's move on to another one here. And this is the Tucson TS-214 Dash Sand. This is another knife that uh, I've done a full review on uh, on the channel. But, um, you know, it's come up in the list. And, uh, you know, in case somebody didn't watch or wasn't fully interested in watching a uh 20 some odd minute review of this guy. Here we go. This is a, uh, <laughs> this is a G10 knife. 
We got yellow G10. That's the only color that you got available to you. You also have a, a version with the titanium on the back here, having much more of a uh, bronze colored um, lightning strike sort of thing. Uh, ends up actually melding decently with the uh, the color of the G10 there. But overall, I tend to like the, uh, the sandblast versions because they give you a lot more grip to it. We got a full titanium backspacer in this particular case. And then we also have this pocket clip, uh, which is interesting. We do have a pin on the inside here, so we do have two points of contact. And it's going through the titanium into the G10. So this thing is uh, nice and rock solid. Pocket clip ends up working out great. Flipper tab works out great. Thumb stud works out great. And this is a very strange compound grind going on here. Let me wipe the blade as I see a little bit of a fingerprints or whatever going on here. This is a Jelly Jerry design. And this one's actually using 14C28N. Even though it's a, um, uh, a very, very new production. Probably because this one was um, kind of uh, agreed upon long enough ago that they still had the 14C uh, allocated for it. And it just took them a long time to actually bring it to market. But yeah, here you go. This one has these uh, really wide thumb studs on there that uh, I think Wong uh, ended up designing uh, for some knives quite a long time ago. Uh, they are titanium, so you can anodize them, um, you know, in case that's something that uh, you actually want to do. Uh, but they're not magnetic, obviously, because they're titanium. So if you drop that, a magnet's not going to help you out on those guys. This one is built weird. This is not a, a standard Tucson where we have, you know, two or three Chicago-style screws going on here. We have the uh, screws, most of which are T6, unfortunately. Um, everything basically is T6, uh, except for the pivot. And then the internal screw for the, uh, the pocket clip is also T8, which is strange, but everything else T6 strange, but they are threaded into that backspacer. So you have screws going on both sides. You actually do have a, uh, pocket clip cap, which is interesting. That means you can swap the clip to the other side. Something that, uh, I think only like three other two sons really have available to it. So yeah, incredibly thin, uh, for the, uh, the front portion of the blade there. And then a little bit more standard or, uh, robust after the fact there. So this thing can do quite a bit of slicing. A little strange. The blade kind of, uh, cants down a bit. Uh, we have a, uh, very, very gradual plunge grind there, but we also have a, a large choil. Maybe not a finger chaw, but yeah, it is what it is. And this is a, a steel liner lock uh, that's kind of mounted internally there. So uh, yeah, a really, really strange knife, but uh, yeah, there we go. Let's see measurements on this guy. 3.6 millimeter blade stock thickness. So a little bit thinner than usual, but still fairly thick. We got 4.91 ounces or 139 grams for the uh, the weight on this guy. This is uh, 3.66 inches from uh, the apex of the uh, handle there out to the tip. That's going to be 92.9 millimeters. And this thing is 0.67 of an inch thick or 17 millimeters. This thing is really thick. It's nice and contoured though, fairly comfortable, but um, that front flipper can kind of dig into your fingers there, at least for me because of the way that the uh, the handle kind of curves. If you relax it so your pinky is on the outside, that's fine, but at that point the crenellations for me are a little bit far away. So maybe not designed for uh, my particular hands, but yeah, it is what it is. All right, and last up is this guy here, which... Um, well, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. This is the Real Steel Huggin, or Hugin, uh, not quite sure. This is the, uh, yeah, this is the, the White Mountain Knives uh, exclusive variant of it that used micarta. Uh, I don't know if they were aware or not that this is using the absolute crap tier kind of micarta stuff that Tucson uses for the micarta stuff here. It is not good, straight up. You know, it, it's uh, almost that burlap kind of stuff. 
It has a bit of grip to it, but it it really just is not a very high quality micarta. Uh, we do have slightly proud steel liners all the way around. Don't particularly like that. It is a little uncomfortable if I'm putting a decent amount of pressure in different places here. This is an Ivan D. Braganitz uh, design. There's their uh, maker's mark. This is in VG10, which uh, some people, I think Metal Complex, uh, certainly uh, has a prejudice against the steel, saying that it's much softer than um, some of the other uh, ingot blade steels out there. Uh, and this one definitely goes against the grain. This took forever for me to uh, get that um, reprofiled down to 17 degrees. So this is definitely on the harder end. I would guess pretty much closer to 61 on the on the Rockwell hardness scale. Um, but unfortunately, that's about the only good thing I can really say about this thing. Oh, I do like the jimping. Uh, that is quite nice. But yeah, those uh, proud steel liners, the, um, the very not um, quality micarta that we got going on here, the uh, the access style uh, stuff doesn't really work anywhere near as well as um, many of the other crossbar locks do. Uh, oh, I do like that uh, this actually does use a uh, matching micarta backspacer there, so that's nice. And the pocket clip, you can actually uh, swap that over to the other side, so that's actually fairly decent. Uh, the thumb studs on this thing also equally very uncomfortable to use. It just digs right in and you need um, so much power to be able to uh, get over that uh, access lock to uh, fully deploy it that, um, yeah, it's uh, it's not all that great. And then I don't really have the same kind of control to uh, fully close that without really over-exaggerating my, um, my, my actions on it. Um, pocket clip I did mention you can swap it from side to side but it is nice and thin so uh, it is fairly discreet in the pocket but um, yeah uh, I avoided picking this guy up for a while because it is a little bit more expensive for a, a budget knife than uh, some stuff from other brands um, and I do hope that uh, real steel does do a bit better job with some of their others um, because this, uh, this, I think was their first, uh, attempt at a crossbar lock, but I think they do have some others. Hopefully they've improved on some of that, but, um, yeah, unfortunately this thing has a, a really good blade attached to a whole lot of not my cup of tea. So in that particular case, it's, it's going to be a good knife that I'm never going to end up probably using. It'll sit around. It'll be in my collection and stuff like that. Um, and it certainly does prove that uh, real steel can put a uh, really, really nice hard heat treat, even on some, um, you know, lesser uh, ingot steels and stuff like that. So that's great. But, uh, you know, you could put an amazing blade on a bad handle and it's still going to make it not a good knife. So unfortunately, not a huge amount of uh, greatness that uh, I really wanted to uh, report there. But hey, it is what it is. I'm also not sure that uh, White Mountain Knives knew that uh, this was the micarta that they would be getting when they negotiated their exclusive deal. Because I think all the rest of uh, the non-exclusive variants were using G10 instead. Eh, I don't know. It's also kind of strange that this uses uh, flatheads for, um, for taking apart uh, some of the knife there. It's a little interesting. But uh, alrighty. So 3 millimeter blade stock thickness on this guy. 3.5 ounces or 99 grams, and that is for 3.64 inches of uh, blade steel or 92.4 millimeters. So it does hit just under that um, ounce and inch mark for it. So that's decent. And we got 0 0.49 of an inch uh, thickness for the, uh, the handle scales there or 12.4 millimeters. Uh, the blade is also, not, it's kind of right in the middle there. It's a little thicker than... Uh, behind the edge that I might prefer for uh, doing some uh, really, really delicate EDC work. But uh, yeah, that kind of makes it a jack of all trades. But, alrighty, there we go. So there's the, uh, the real steel Hogan. We got the uh, Tucson TS 214. We got the, uh, the Mossonary uh, MK 12. 
We got the six leaf SL 25 and the Kaiser horn here from Ozzo. Kind of an eclectic mix of, um, budget knives that I had, uh, kind of show up for this set. But, uh, yeah, that's basically everything that I wanted to uh, cover over these guys over there, you know, around that five minutes or so. So, uh, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, you know? So,